I have a special treat for you this episode. As you know, I recommended Dismal last week on Indie Assault. Well, it just so happens that I have one of the stars of the movie with me. His role was a sick, demented cannibal who fathered a mutant inbred. It's my pleasure to announce on Grizzly Zone, Bill Oberst Jr. Welcome, Bill. Bill, it's a pleasure to be on Grizzly Zone. Hey, hey check out what I'm wearing. Hey, you look just like this. you were, man. Can you see what this is? I act. I'm going to have to take off my shades for the audience. How about now? Can you see? Wow, what is that, man? Is it's it from the set? Ear. Oh, it's from the set, man. The deal is, like, this is my a mold of my actual severed ear. And it's a, a special effects artist is going to start selling these as the Bill Oberst Jr. severed ear on a string. That is cool, man. How much? My mother is so proud. <laughs> right. He's going to do like, he can't decide whether to do a string of ears or may, or just like two ears on a string. Right. <laughs> Not to be confused with the Bill Obers Jr. Horror Rosary, which this jewelry designer in England did for me, and she named this after me. So I don't know if you can see this, but these are little skulls. Yes, we can see it. We'll attached be to, to the rosary. That so, yeah, I've, I'm like uh, Mr. Merchandise here. There you go, man. Hey, man, I hear you. All right, we're going to get uh, ask Bill a few questions here, man. It'll This will be about 10 minutes long. Um, first thing I got to ask you for the audience, man, is what's a couple of your favorite horror movies of all time, Bill? The Exorcist has got to be number one. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and I think it's because um, it seemed uh, – really plausible because I do believe there's such a thing as real evil and real demons. And I think that's why it scared so many people, you know? Right. Well, that's uh, my it, co-host's it, favorite horror movie, man. So I know she's going to like that, man. You got another one? It really scared me. Children should not play with dead things. <laughs> right. Old, old movie. Right. Along what? with evil dead scared me. And then in the modern times, Insidious scared the crap out of me. Really? I didn't like Insidious, man. It's weird. I think it has something to do with like the mood you're in when you go see it. Cause I've talked to people who loved it and people who didn't. Right. Yeah, man. But that's not your style film that you're in, man. Insidious. I, I know. I know. <laughs> um, I talked to Dick Smith. I went to a makeup uh, convention, special effects convention, and he was speaking. He told this great story about riding around with the dummy of Reagan from the exorcist when her head twisted around. Right. He had to take it home at night because for some reason he didn't want to leave it there on the set. I guess it was so expensive. And he's riding through the streets of New York City and he got pulled for speeding <laughs> wow. with this girl demon possessed with her head twisted around riding beside him. It's, That's crazy, man. All right, right let's get some of these questions, man, for our audience. All right. Because you played such a deranged character in Dismal, man, I think it'd be interesting to let the audience know. What you go through as an actor, you know, what place, in, where do you go in your mind, man, to pull off this role of such a perverse character in a movie like that? Bill, I can't tell you how much fun it is to do these perverse, deranged characters. You, it's not hard at all because, um, I mean, I'm a pretty nice guy, but everybody has that dark side and we just suppress it and repress it and society pushes it down and a good thing too. Right. But it's pretty darn easy once you're on set. You're within a, the safety of the set, and you're allowed to play and to let this dark side come out. Um, I think that's what accounts for some of the popularity of things like vampire clubs and people who live sort of a goth lifestyle. You know, everybody needs some outlet, safe outlet, safe, to let that dark right. side come out. But it's uh, unbelievable, and, Bill, because I praised you on our last episode, man. I think you made the movie. I mean, you were by far the best actor in the movie. When you were on screen, man, you could feel how demented you were. Thank you. You know what we, I mean? You know what I thought of? I thought of people who made fun of me as a kid when I did Dale. Because uh, I was an ugly kid, and obviously, you know, I'm still not a, you know attractive guy. Hey, man, I'm the same. Come on, man. <laughs> Um, and I was fat and I made straight A's. I was, I knew all the answers in Sunday school and people made a lot of fun of me. They really gave me hell. And so when I was on the set with these kids, I was thinking, how would this backwoods 
ranger think if he brings these girls in, chops up their boyfriend, feeds them their boyfriend, and then they have the they have the balls to say, no, I'm not going to eat it. And he's like, what the hell? You don't want my food? Right. <laughs> so there's that great scene where he says, you ungrateful bitch. <laughs> right. Let me tell you something. Maybe back in your college, you can't get any lattes or your fancy coffee drinks, but you don't know shit about the real world, little girl. <laughs> That's it, man. Sad. Unbelievable. You don't want to eat my food? So, yeah. Um, I draw on childhood experiences a lot. I guess I'll be. <laughs> And you were fat, huh, man? You're skinny as a rail, dude. I was immense. And then I changed, and now I'm too skinny. So there's, like, nothing in between. All right, man. I got one more psychological question here, man. Cool. All right. My favorite movie is uh, Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I should have included that in my favorites. That's oh. scary as crap. Absolutely. Okay, now there's a character in that, since you know the movie well, The Cook, played by Jim Sydow. Now, in my mind, it was a similar role to Dale that you played in Dismal. Yes. Because you were both spouting off demands at will and, like, you were the leader. But, you know, your killers below you, you know, your sons, they were off doing their own thing, not really paying attention to it. So do you admire the people that came before you? And do you even, like, model yourself off somebody like Jim Seidel? Absolutely. Jim Seidel. Um, uh, Bill McKinney, um, Steve Rails back all the way back to Lon Chaney. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, uh, Karloff, uh, Lugosi, um, all of these people who were the pioneers well, of, that's of awesome. bringing a disturbing presence. Cause what I want to do on screen and what I think I do well is disturb people. I want to make people a little unsettled and there's an art to that. And I've try am trying to learn it by studying uh, Seidel and other people like that from the past. Absolutely. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was so real. It didn't seem like a movie. Exactly. Man, I'm touched that you think it's so good because I think that's the best movie, not just horror movie ever made, man. I think it was brilliant back then, man. I think it still holds up now, I, man. I was raised down the country in South Carolina, and I remember when I saw that, I was afraid to go drive in the woods. Absolutely. Me too, man. You know, these guys are out there. They seem so real. Absolutely. All right, man. Um, We don't have much more time, but um, what are you working on now, Bill, man? So, uh, and what's coming out that our audience can uh, look forward to? I got a movie coming out that's the most disturbing thing I ever shot. It's by a director named Jordan McClure. The film is called Children of Sorrow, and we shot it out in the desert, and I play a cult leader. And I'm not allowed to say much about the plot. And I said, Jordan, what can I say? And he said, you can tell them the people who love sick shit, they're going to love this movie. <laughs> right. That's it's true. really, it's, it's, it's physically disturbing and it's emotionally and psychologically disturbing what this cult leader does to these kids. Right. Uh, and it really played with my mind while we were filming it. And it's the first time I've ever been off the internet while I was filming. The role was so important to me for two weeks. I didn't check mail. I wasn't on Facebook, no cell phone, nothing. I was like in the desert, isolated for two weeks. I gave my heart and soul to this role, and and I hope it comes out really, really scary. That's awesome. When's that come out? Probably. Bill? Yeah. When's that come out, Bill? Um, we're hoping into the year or first of next year. Cool. They're working on it now, sort of tweaking the edit. I keep writing to Jordan saying, you know, Jordan, how's it look? And he writes back, it's really sick, That's which is cool. good. I can't wait. Only in my business is that a compliment. <laughs> you got to come back on, man, when that comes out, man, so we can talk about it. I will. All right, man. So this is your time, man. Where can people find out about Bill O'Burst? And we will have links up for all you fans on the site so you can click over. But name anything you got, Bill. Sure, man. I got a new website, um, which just went up on Halloween, and it's BillOburst.com. Just my name, dot com. You can no also junior, check out my right? IMBD. And you can see me scaring lots of people on Facebook on the application TakeThisLollipop.com, which is going viral. It has almost 5 million likes, 15 million views. It's on CNN everywhere. And uh, I won't tell you much about it except that if you're on Facebook and you log in to TakeThisLollipop.com, you'll have a disturbing experience. That's awesome, man. All right, Brother Bill, it was an honor getting you on. Thanks for taking the time, man. Bill, it's my pleasure to be on Horror Palace, man. Rock on. Thanks, man. Later.